Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and today we're going to be talking about Tang Garden. In this game you're going to be placing tiles on the board to decorate a garden. You're also going to have the ability to place decorations and people in the garden based off how you would like to earn points. One of the great things about this game is that you can use different strategies each time you play it, so the replayability is awesome. I don't really have a lot of negative things, or maybe any, to say about this game. I was very impressed. It wasn't one that necessarily was on my list to get, but now that we have it, I am so glad because I see us reaching for this game, I don't know, forever. <laughs> It's so cool visually. It gives you an awesome tactile experience getting to place characters throughout the board on their specific spaces that you'll be able to see on each tile. There's places you can put people on tiles. There's places you can put certain other types of decoration, whether it's fish to go in a water tile or whether it is a tree to go on a greenery tile. There's specific icons on the tiles to allow you to place. Then these also have places where you can put them. And the really cool thing is that these and the bridges, which you see right here, these have places for you to put your characters. So again, you get kind of that little make-believe play experience as you are working to earn points by building your garden. Um, we found that because there's just enough randomness with what garden tiles are available at the time and what people are available on the top of the deck, what decorations you end up drawing, and these landscape tiles, since those are random, we found each of the times we played to be different and unique. The most recent time we played, I think the first couple times we were trying to do a little bit of everything, figuring out what worked. I know my husband, he had done more of the tree placement to earn points in that way by getting a set of that certain decorative item gets you more points. Um, anyway, and then the most recent time we played, we didn't have the tiles on the top that we wanted, so we just kept reaching for decorations and decorations and decorations. Both of us were being a little bit ornery about who's gonna place the next actual tile in the garden until we ran out of spaces for our decoration. It added a really fun, unique spin in a way that we hadn't played yet, and it took what was our usual already technique of trying to move our tracks here on the player board. Um, let me explain this really quick and then you'll understand a little bit better. So the types of tiles that you have, you have rock, greenery, and water. When you place one of those and connect it to another of its type, you're going to get to move your cube forward on the track. Depending on how you connect, whether you finish things is going to determine if you get to move one or two spaces. Sometimes there's a bonus. And then you're going to earn coins for other activities and the coins are your victory points. So you'll have ways to earn them with movement and um, Depending on your certain player card, there's ability to earn coins throughout by placing certain things. Not necessarily the card I'm holding right now. This is just, I just need it in my hands to talk about one. Um, and then you're going to have options for how to earn points now versus how to earn points at the end of game. And those things are going to determine whether you place that character on the board or you keep it as the one character that you have in your hand to utilize their top ability. Um, as you get new characters throughout the game, you are going to have to place characters on the board and decide which one to keep again. Uh, then there is each little special place on the player board. You're going to have bonuses when you reach those, whether that's placing a person, earning some extra coins, earning some extra coins here. And for the people, you're going to have to get at least all of your cube to that point, if not farther. And then this one, they earn coins as they reach that, which is pretty cool. And then you have elements down here that are gonna allow you to have special abilities that you can utilize throughout the game as an optional action. 
And those special abilities include moving a character, searching through the character deck so that you can make sure you get what you want because at any given time, you're just gonna have two cards available to view, two character cards. If you don't wanna choose those, you may wanna utilize this ability to search for the best character. Um, depending on their point scoring abilities. And then this one's gonna allow you to take two cards at once instead of one of your decorations. And this is gonna allow you to play, I guess play is the word I was looking for. This is gonna allow you to play two garden tiles on your turn instead of one. I didn't really mention that's what you get to do, but you do get to place either on your turn, you get to place a tile, you get to draw decorative items, then there's bonus actions. All right, so then let's talk about the decorative, decorative items because these are pretty cool um, with how they work. So let's say, for example, somebody had placed this tile and this tile on the board. You have two face down tile stacks. They're always face down. And then once you reach three of them with face down tiles, you're going to be able to flip all the rest new. So only ever three will be empty unless somebody utilizes grabbing that last one on their turn. But what you get to do is you always get to draw two. These are gonna be like this. You're gonna draw two decorative items. And then if there's any that are flipped upside down here, you're gonna get to draw an extra card for those. So since there's two that we can't see that are flipped upside down, we're gonna grab two extra cards and then you're gonna be able to pick one of these decorative items to keep in your hand. And we'll take a peek at these real quick. There's these trees. So three of these cards are trees and they allow you to earn points the more of each different type of tree that you get. So if you have one type of tree, you're gonna get one point. And then if you have all the types of trees, you're gonna earn 25 points, coins at the end of the game. And then there's other ones like the flowers that are gonna want you to have sets. So if you have one set of flower, the one type of flower that you play, it's gonna want you to play this other certain type in order to earn any points from that, any coins um, that you're gonna earn six versus zero for just having one. And then the birds and the fish, those work the same way where you're going to wanna to have pairings in order to score from them. It's very similar to Sushi Go in that aspect of needing to collect a set of things. The bridge is pretty cool cause you earn two coins. And then this is a little bonus that you get on some of the cards. This is gonna allow you to bump up one of your tracks here of your choice, cause you see it's got the rainbow coloring. This one specifically allows you to bump up that rock space. And then there's other ones that allow you to, wow, we're gonna find them, I swear. I'm just making a hot mess in here. <laughs> Where are they? There we go. All right, so here we have our pavilions. And here you'll see these two little icons. So those are bonuses that you get when you play this pavilion, when you choose to take this as um, something you're gonna keep. And you're gonna get to place a pavilion when you draw this anywhere that there's this little rock emblem. And if you have the most pavilions, you're gonna get 12 points at the end of game. And if you have the second most, you're gonna get six. But then see this little bonus, these match up with these guys here. And when you get to take one of these, whether it's from this special bonus on this card, or whether it's from placing a tile, let's say we filled up this space. This is not gonna be correct, but let's pretend that we put that here. And then, oh, maybe I can make it correct. We'll see here. Um, if I put this here, then I would have landed on this. So that's another way to take one of these. And what these things here allow you to do is they are going to allow you to either take your large landscape tiles and your small landscape tiles, and you get to place those wherever you want on the board. You're gonna see things like these symbols and those come into play with your characters and how they score. They may want to face certain things, they may not want to face certain things, and they may earn extra, extra points for facing a lot of some things. So 
anyway, the end of the game is triggered when there is only three left on the board, three of these little token friends, and then, um, or you're going to have one stack that's completely empty. Anyway, that was a lot of how to play. And I think that it's important to tell you how to play because there's so many beautiful elements to the game as I cause complete chaos. That is not part of the game. Um, but we have had a really great time. I do plan on continuing to play this game. I don't plan on ever getting rid of this game. And I am very happy that we have this game. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. But I have to say this game is unique. It's beautiful. It gives you the tactile experience and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching guys.